NBC is reporting Governor DeSantis is ignoring your calls on hurricanes, resources, and, and help. How does that hurt the situation here? You know, moments of crisis, if, if nothing else, should really be the moment that anyone who calls themselves a leader says they're going to put politics aside and put the people first. People are in desperate need of support right now. And playing political games at this moment in these crisis situations, these are the height of emergency situations, is just utterly irresponsible and it is selfish and it is about political gamesmanship instead of doing the job that you took an oath to do, which is to put the people first. The governor of Florida has been cooperative. He said he's gotten all that he needs. I talked to him again yesterday, and I and I said, whatever. I said, no, you're doing a great job. It's being all being done well. We thank you for it. And I literally gave my personal phone number to call. Um, so I don't know. There was a rough start in some places, but every governor, every governor from Florida to North Carolina has been fully cooperative and supportive and acknowledged what this team is doing. And they're doing an incredible job. But we got a lot more to do. And we've been laser focused on leveraging all resources available, including from the federal government. And I've been in touch with both FEMA and the president, as well as marshalling all our state agencies and working to support our local communities. And so for Kamala Harris uh, to try to say that my sole focus on the people of Florida is somehow selfish uh, is delusional. She has no role in this. Uh, in fact, she's been vice president for three and a half years. I've dealt with a number of storms under this administration. She has never uh, contributed anything to any of these efforts. And so what I think is selfish has she ever is her before? trying to blunder into this. No. And here's has the she thing. She has no role. No, she has no role in this process. Uh, I'm in contact with the president of the United States. I'm in contact with FEMA director. I'm obviously managing all our state agencies. We're supporting all our local government. And I will say this. I've had storms under both President Trump and President Biden, uh, and I've worked well with both of them. She's the first one who's trying to politicize the storm, and she's doing that just because of her campaign. She's trying to get some type of an edge. She knows she's, she's doing poorly, and so she's playing these political games. I don't have time for political games. I've got people whose lives are on the line. I've got people whose homes and their possessions are on the line, and we are focused 100% on that mission. I'm not worried about playing her political games. And so she is being selfish by trying to blunder into this when we're working just fine. Ah, the circus continues, guys. You know? And, and through times like this, I... I, I just don't... Um, it's, it's sad, man. It's a disgrace. We got to see and hear this lady talk and laugh, man. When people's lives have been devastated, animals have drowned, towns and cities have been completely wiped. Millions are struggling and dying as I'm recording this video. And we got to hear this lady, man, playing her political games for her campaign. Um, you know, when her campaign has, 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 it has hit the floor, her campaign has, is dropping it like it's hot. She didn't tow her draws. You know what grandma used to say back in the day? You have toned your draws. Use on thin ice. And the ice has broken. She, did, she I'm telling y'all, after everything we've seen, man, this lady should be landslided out. Landslided out. You know, going on sex podcast, call her daddy, you know. Now she's on the next day she's on the view, on the spew. You know, this is this is terrible, man. On on the view. You know, blaming the FEMA and this hurricane uh, and, and and their failures on Trump still. And then look. Well, if, if anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact.
she should be landslided out. You don't, you don't deserve a promotion. You don't deserve, didn't earn it. You know, they call you, you know, they call you racist when you call out the truth, when you say DEI. But hey, DEI didn't earn it. And from these last interviews and everything that we've seen this past year, I think she's drunk. Drunk entire inventory. Unqualified, not qualified, sorry. The party of lying, deranged women and beta men. Woke. Let's all stay woke. The party of the woke people. And look what look what woke has gotten everybody. Look what woke has got. Just look around. Look what, look what woke has gotten everybody. Prayers, man, for America. Prayers for our hurricane victims. Prayers. To, we don't know what to expect next. And I told y'all October was going to be crazy. I told y'all, man. I told y'all. This lady deserves to be landslided out. I don't see how Trump did. This isn't the worst performing Democrat in our lifetime. You know, and all I can do is show it to you. Huge shout out to Ron DeSantis, man. You know. You know, and she wants to play this political game. I mean, people are lives, y'all. People, have y'all seen what's been going on? I know y'all seen the, the videos, the pictures. This is sad, man. This is an absolute disgrace. And she on here laughing and giggling on sex podcast. People can't find us seven hundred and fifty dollars, and then they, it comes out maybe to be a loan. We done ran out of money because this what we do. We send it all the we send all the money over to the, to the illegals to to the war. You Ukraine. You know we need to go 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 back and get that check. We need to go on back go, go get that check back. Go get that check back. And I think every hardworking uh, taxpaying citizen should go on strike. We all just start strike, strike the IRS, strike everything. We just stop paying taxes. Because we the people come last, man. And people still clap for these failures and puppets. And as you've seen in these past interviews, she's completely bombed these softballs. He's edited 60 minute interviews and I, I recorded the 60 minute interview earlier and guess what they do to us content creators so they can protect Kamala Harris, Kamala, Comrade, Communist. They block our videos now. The news channels, CBS, is it CBS? Now they're, they have blocked our news channels. Some of these big time creators hit me up saying, Rick, did your video get blocked? Yes, it got blocked. So there's like two or three videos you guys were supposed to see, but you couldn't see it because they protecting Kamala Harris. Party Governor Ron DeSantis hearing all that and probably knew it already. He joins us live from the emergency management headquarters in Tallahassee. Uh, Governor, you've been there quite often. What's the greatest challenge with Milton as opposed to Helene or others you've had to deal with over the last seven years? Well, I think as Janice mentioned, uh, you know, this is tracking very close to that Tampa Bay area. I would note that anyone on the Western Peninsula of Florida, uh, just wherever that eye wall is scheduled to go across now on these cones, that can shift. I think right now they have it just south of Tampa Bay in Manatee County. Uh, it could shift further north and it could shift further south uh, in terms of having the most immediate impacts. Uh, but uh, that Tampa Bay area is very low lying. Pinellas County, where I grew up, is surrounded by water. It's a peninsula. Uh, it is just vulnerable to storm surge generally. Uh, this is a storm that's going to be hitting sometime Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. The water is already going to be high with the tide. Uh, so, so that's a huge, huge concern. Now, it had gotten up to 180 mile an hour when it was going towards the Yucatan Peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that is an incredibly powerful storm. It has weakened since then. It may strengthen today. The forecasts are that it will make landfall weaker than it is today. Let's pray that that's the case. Um, the surge is going to be a big enough problem, uh, and hopefully uh, uh, the winds are manageable. Most of the buildings in Florida are going to be able to handle a Category 3 storm. So there's a lot going on. And oh, by the way, 
we just had a Category 4 storm uh, impact a lot of people uh, up, up the west coast of Florida. Uh, one of the issues that we saw in places like the Pinellas County beaches and Manatee County beaches was there was a lot of debris. And these local governments have to pick it up. They have contractors that do it. But it wasn't being done fast enough. Uh, so I did this weekend. I took all of our state agencies, any truck we had anywhere in the state who's involved in normal missions, uh, we diverted it over to those barrier islands. We're doing a 24-7 debris mission. So we've been able in 48 hours with our state assets be able to do as much debris removal um, as any of the contractors who've been doing this for almost two weeks. Wow. Uh, we actually had to pry open one of the landfills in Pinellas County because it wasn't operating 24-7 as my executive of order did but we've made a big dent in that and the issue is is if you have this debris laying out it could become projectiles right. yeah. and then with the storm surge it creates more damage so it's very difficult we're going to get hit basically two weeks on the dot from getting hit by helene uh, but we felt it was important that we did that we also have now close to forty thousand utility linemen in the state of Florida or in route. And remember, there's a lot of these workers that are still in Georgia and North Carolina and sure. those places. We've had to bring them in all the way from California. So they're gonna be ready to do the power you restoration are... mission. And then we'll have 8,000 Florida National yeah. Guard uh, when the storm hits, uh, all our urban search and rescue, our Florida State Guard, fish and wildlife, all that will be there ready to go so we're prepared for this this is not easy i think it's been very taxing on our citizens to have to go through this just as you're starting to pick up the pieces from helene now right. you see another monster storm bearing down uh but we'll get through this i think the important thing today is you still have time to execute your plan you do not have to get on the interstate and drive hundreds of miles there are shelters open all throughout the state of Florida. In your county, there's shelters mm. that are in higher ground and that are hurricane proof. Uh, so if you don't wanna get on the interstate, you don't have to. Uh, and there's a wide variety of options. So if you are in one of those storm pro sur surge prone areas, uh, take action now. We have all day today. Uh, as we get into tomorrow, you're gonna start seeing effects most likely in, in Wednesday right. afternoon. And in, in fact, uh, Governor, I, I was down in Florida yesterday, yesterday, and I know that a lot of the stores are running out of water. The gas stations are running low on gas. A lot of people who were impacted by Helene actually lost their cars. And so uh, there are lines out, out the door at car rental places for people trying to get out. Uh, and, and as well, you've got your emergency services people, and the cops are going door to door in these A-zone evacuation areas. Uh, saying you've got to get out because once this storm hits, you guys are not going to be able to go and save them. They've got to save themselves by getting out now, right? Yeah, and so on the transportation, because you raise a good point, uh, the counties are providing uh, transportation for folks that don't have it. And then the state has entered into an agreement with Uber. Uh, so if you need a ride to a shelter, uh, you can go on Uber, um, you know, there's a, there's awesome. a code for Milton Relief. Uh, and so take advantage of that, absolutely, I um, mean, you should do that. But yes, you, you run from the water and you hide from the wind. You know, mm -hmm. if we end up with a Category 3 storm, most of the mm -hmm. places in Florida, particularly with our building codes, if you hunker down, in and of itself, you'll probably be okay. But the water, you just can't contend with Mother Nature. If you have yeah. 10 feet of that surging in, it is incredibly destructive it is not something that that you want to mess with uh, so there are options for you you have time uh, to be able to do it um, and make sure that you are safe in your family and oh by the way the pets too all the yeah. all counties and Got shelters it. you can bring they have at least one pet friendly shelter we've actually evacuated some of the the pet shelters uh where you know you've had abandoned pets we've moved them to safer shelters in other parts of the state so there's contingencies for all this stuff we, 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 we're going to have damage. You, uh, you, people are going to lose homes, Governor, we're going to have businesses, we're going to have destruction mm -hmm. of infrastructure, but uh, yeah. we can fix all that. You guys can't fix if you decide you, to stay in 10 feet of storm right, surge yeah. and you die. You're you've right. you've mastered the process there. Everybody gives you credit for it because, you know, you guys do such a great job with handling this. But we're learning that FEMA now is reporting that there's a severe shortage of disaster workers. Um, this is also coming with they're saying they're going to need more money. They made they may run out of money in November. So what are your thoughts on that? And 
Are, do you guys, are you guys set in Florida to be able to cover your people, even if FEMA won't have the money? Well, well, we have what we need right now. And so FEMA, we work with them. Some of the urban search and rescue, a lot of those people are in Florida anyways, but we're also bringing them in from around the country. We're also working with DOD to supplement uh, the fuel mission. So, so we have all our requests have been honored pre-storm and we anticipate after the storm. I don't know what Congress is going to have to do going forward, uh, but I will want because Steve also raised a good point about the fuel. So the fuel situation is in Florida. Uh, it's not a supply issue. It's a distribution issue because it, the, the stations are running through it faster than they normally do. We have Florida Highway Patrol escorting these fuel trucks into the gas stations. Uh, right. We have um, a billion and a half gallons uh, that are either in Florida or in route in reserve. Our port of Tampa is still open. It's still going to be receiving fuel. So I think it's more of just when they run out, you got to replenish it. Uh, but we have stocked uh, spare fuel in the state of Florida, and we'll continue mm. to do that uh, leading up to the storm. And we anticipate you could have some major interruptions at the Port of Tampa, which is one of the places where we get a lot of our fuel from. Um, and so we will work around that as, as needed. Governor, uh, I know Kamala Harris called you selfish. She, she said she's tried to contact you uh, to talk to you about hurricane relief. And uh, I know that You've said she I think you said she didn't try to contact you. We want to get your response. But first, listen to what she said. Well, we don't have the sound, but she said, you know, moment of crisis, if nothing else, should really be the moment that anyone calls himself a leader, says they're going to put politics aside and put the people first. People are in desperate need of support right now and playing political games at this moment in these crisis situations. There are these are the height of emergency situations. It's just utterly irresponsible and it's selfish and it's about political gamemanship. What's your response? Well, I think she should look in the mirror. We've <laughs> been on an emergency footing uh, for two weeks straight, round the clock, 24-7. Uh, we've been working, my office, our Division of Emergency Management, helping people prepare for Hurricane Helene, helping effectuate rescues of people after Hurricane Helene, helping people pick up the pieces of their lives after Helene, and then have to also turn around and prepare for major impacts and maybe even more impacts uh, from Hurricane Milton, be able to have rescue personnel ready to help people, and then, of course, help with the power restoration, all these things to do. So that's been my sole focus. Uh, my focus has not been on dealing with, with Kamala Harris. Um, I, did, I saw the news report. I didn't know she tried to contact me. But I'd also say it's not about you, Kamala. Right. It's about the people of Florida. My focus is exactly where it should be. And yes. I can tell you this, I've worked with, on these hurricanes under both President Trump and President Biden. Neither of them ever tried to politicize it. She has never called on any of the storms we've had since she's been vice president until apparently now. Why all of a sudden is she trying to parachute in and inject herself when she's never shown any interest in the past? We know it's because of politics. We know it's because of her campaign. I have zero time uh, to entertain these political games. We're going to continue to do what we need to do to prepare and respond to what may be one of the most damaging storms in the history of the United States. So she says focusing on protecting your people is selfish. I think she ought to look in the mirror. Mm. Mm. And right now, Governor, just to conclude, you have what Damn you need on. I tell you, from the federal stepping, government as well as you feel like you have the resources in place. Is that correct? We, every request we've made, and I've been in okay. contact with the president. I've been in contact with the FEMA director. You know, it's interesting. Harris is not even in the chain of command. Yeah, what she is has she no doing? role in this. I mean, the idea that I should be, like, worrying about her when I'm focused on the task at hand is just, quite frankly, uh, absurd. So, yes, all of our requests have been answered. Um, we have marshaled all state resources uh, that are available to us. It's going to be a very robust response, but it's going to be a lot of damage, and we're right. bracing for that. I'd ask everyone to keep us in your prayers. Uh, we know we're going to get hit, but hopefully we can pray that this storm will weaken right. and do the least amount of damage possible. All right, Governor. Absolutely. We'll Great job out soon. there. Best of luck. Thank you. Again, I hope, I hope, I hope this lady's land slided out, man. My prayers, my love goes out to the hurricane victims, and we send our condolences, man. To the ones that have lost, you know, lost loved ones. Sad, man. 
and to see those those videos, those those pictures, you know, and they're and they're floating everywhere throughout social media. You guys see the same thing I'm seeing. It's sad, man. People are underwater right now, you know. My love, my prayers goes out to you guys. Um, prayers for October. Um, that this mess clears up, man. And hey, I will catch you beautiful people in the next one, man. Peace and love, y'all.